Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're going to look at two retail giants, Target and Walmart. So I'm going to compare the two stocks based on their expected cash flows, look at their dividends, look at their growth, and ultimately try and figure out which one is the better deal right now. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan. I do stock analysis videos. So hit that subscribe button to see more videos like this one. All right, let's get started. All right, so you guys know Walmart and Target. They both really just have one business segment. So I'm just going to cover where they make their money. For Walmart, their revenue comes largely from the U.S., 77%, 23% in other countries. Target is actually very similar, but a little more concentrated in the U.S. Here's a quick look at Walmart stock. One of the reasons I wanted to make this video is that the stock price of Walmart has really gone down substantially in the past month, losing about 10.5% of its value. So it could be a good time to pick it up. We're going to have to analyze their financials to get a better sense of that. But anyhow, it's trading at about 23.5 times next period's earnings. It's yielding about 1.7%. It's about a $360 billion company. Let's compare to Target. Target has also lost about 8.6% of its value in the past month. They're currently valued at about $85 billion, which represents close to 20 times their next period's earnings. And they're yielding about 1.58% right now. Given their value stocks and dividend growth stocks, let's have a look at their dividends. This is Walmart here. They've been growing dividends for 48 years straight. The five-year growth rate is close to 2%. The payout ratio is just 40%. So they're actually only paying you about 40% of their profits. The other 60% is probably going towards share buybacks or reinvestment needs. They're currently yielding about 1.7%. For Target, we have a lower yield, a little bit less than 1.6%. However, Target's payout ratio is much lower at 31% here. So they have more potential for future growth. They also have better recent growth. In the past five years, they have an average dividend growth rate of about 4%. And they've also grown their dividend for 52 straight years. So they're pretty similar in that respect. So let's compare the balance sheets of both Walmart and Target. They're actually pretty similar in a lot of senses. For one, they have a similar liabilities to assets ratio, which tells me their general leverage there. Pretty moderate for both, Target slightly higher. Most of the liabilities are actually current liabilities. You can see that from their fairly low debt to assets ratios there. Uh, very typical for a retailer, you typically owe your suppliers a lot at any given point in time. And so they have a lot of current liabilities. Their current ratio for both of them is hovering really close to 1. It's so similar, I'm not even going to give any credit to Target for being better. It's just too close. A uh, quick ratio, about 0.5 for both. Uh, by the way guys, if you don't know any of these ratios, check them out in the description below. Interest coverage ratio is where they really, you know, distinguish themselves. I like targets a lot better. Walmart there, close to 10. That means about a tenth of their profits before taxes go to their, their interest expense. So that's a lot. It's not presenting any huge red flag like Walmart's in big trouble here. I just mean it, it's cutting it a little tight. I like Target a lot better in that respect. Target also has more cash on hand right now. Uh, they're both pretty similar in every other respect. So, you know, I got to say Target's balance sheet a little bit better. All right, guys. So here is a DuPont analysis. I'm taking that return on equity for both companies and breaking it down into its three components to get a better sense of how they make their money. Target has a better return on equity. That is very apparent from just glancing at these. How is that? Well, for one, Walmart is the low-cost option. 
they have thinner net income margin there. So net income margin tells you how much money you make for every dollar of sales. For Walmart, the answer is about two cents. You know, somewhere around there, it varies. Maybe a little more than that. For Target, it's pretty much double that. Target generates about four cents of profit for every dollar of sales. In fact, it was 4.7 last year, so very good there. You know, it seems like a small difference, but that's double Walmart. Asset turnover tells you how much revenue you can generate for every dollar of assets. So it's kind of like measuring how efficient you are at using your assets. Both companies have asset turnover ratios that are very high. That's very typical for retailers. But clearly, Walmart is the winner here, generating much more sales compared to Target. Although Target is closing the gap in the past two years, starting to get that number up there. So if they can continue that, they're going to be a lot better deal. The equity multiplier measures leverage, and that's fairly similar for both, although Target's is a little higher. So Target, clearly the better company here as far as profitability. Does it make it the better stock? Well, not necessarily. We've got to see which is the better value. Now, both companies are pretty much cash cows. You know, they have no R&D. They don't really have a lot of reinvestment needs. So they do a lot of buybacks. Here is Walmart's number of shares outstanding over time. You can see that about 2012, they had about 3.4 billion shares outstanding. And they're currently sitting at about 2.8 billion. A very substantial decline there and very good for you as a shareholder. Same for Target, really. Target here had about 668 million shares. Today, that's been reduced to about 500 million. So very significant buybacks going on there. All right, guys, so here are some earnings per share growth expectations going forward. I'm looking at analyst forecast data for Walmart. Next year, they're not expected to grow earnings at all. After that, they expect about 7.5%, you know, 10.5%, 10%, and then slow down a little bit. Here is Target's earnings estimates. They are expected to have a decline in earnings next year. They're expected to rebound right back and then follow that with some pretty average growth there, you know, 7 8% or so. All right, guys, so at this point in the video, I want to use an intrinsic valuation model to, mo to value both Walmart and Target. I will use the free cash flow to equity model because neither company really pays out a substantial amount of their profits as dividends. The dividend discount model would substantially underestimate the value of either company. Now, to make the model work, I'm going to use the earnings per share growth estimates provided to us by analysts. And we're going to see what the value is for, for each company. Now, to make the model work, I need a discount rate. I'm going to show you guys the value using several discount rates so you can decide for yourself. Uh, I also need to estimate the growth in free cash flows. Again, I'm going to rely on the analyst forecast, but I'm also going to show you guys how the value would change if the analysts were wrong you know, on the downside or if they underestimated it and we had further upside. Let's have a look at it. All right, guys, so here we have a valuation matrix. Every cell here represents the value of Walmart stock given a certain discount rate and a certain growth rate in free cash flows over the next five years. After five years, we're just going to assume Walmart can grow their cash flows at 2% per year forever. If that's the case, you know, you get a variety of values. The most optimistic sell is this one right here. This one says, okay, my discount rate is 6%. I think Walmart can grow cash flows in an average of 11% over the next five years. Walmart would then be worth $155.30 per share. Now, is that the most likely? You know, it kind of depends on you, what you see happening. I do agree that Walmart is not very risky. They deserve a lower discount rate. I think 6% would be fine, maybe 7%. Uh, but of course, I like to err on the conservative side, so... 
you know, it wouldn't really be a good deal under a lot of these cells here. Uh, now, yeah. to get a sense of how good or bad a deal Walmart is at the moment, you can have a look at the matrix below where I color code it red if it's overvalued or green if it's undervalued relative to the price today of about $129. So overall, it doesn't look like a great deal. If you think a 6% discount rate is appropriate, you think they'll grow at 7%, yeah, it could be about fair price. Looking at Target, I have plugged in lower growth rates here in the cash flows, given what we saw from the analyst forecast. I'm using about the same discount rate range here, anywhere from 6 to 9. And so, which sell is most likely? Well, I think Target has a great balance sheet. I think a 6 or 7% rate is appropriate. Uh, but I've, I've shown you the values for higher rates, you know, depending on your risk aversion. So for me, I'm in the first two rows here. I tend to be more conservative. I might be somewhere around here as far as growth, you know, 5% or something. Uh, so yeah, I think a target is about fairly valued, maybe slightly undervalued if you're using a lower discount rate. To get a better sense of that, you can look at the matrix below. So if you use a 6% discount rate, uh, another way of looking at that is, okay, if you want a 6% return, yeah, Target is actually quite undervalued. Even if they can only grow 4%, it's still significantly undervalued under that scenario. One final factor I like to look at is insider trading activity. Sometimes we can learn about the near future of a company by looking at the insider's trading. With Walmart, we have you know, a fairly negative signal with 89 sales transactions in the past three months, 21 buys. When we look at the number of shares involved, it's a little more than a 4 to 1 ratio of people selling compared to people buying. So yeah, that is negative. If we compare to Target, it's very interesting. In the past three months, Target has almost no insider trading activity. Three sales and one buy. Let's have a look at the number of shares involved. And really, in the grand scheme of things, that is really not a lot of shares there, especially on the uh, shares bought. So really no information for Target there. All right, guys, here are my final thoughts on Walmart versus Target. First of all, Target has a slightly better balance sheet, so they're a little bit less risky in that respect. Second, Target has a better business model. When I look at the DuPont analysis, they are more profitable compared to Walmart. Third, I will say that Target has more room for growth. Walmart, well, there's a Walmart everywhere. Depending on where you live, you probably have a choice of different Walmarts you can go to. Not the same for Target, although Targets are very common. Uh, they have more room for growth compared to Walmart. Target also has a dividend to payout ratio that's a little bit lower compared to Walmart. So I like their dividend growth more going forward. And finally, you know, most importantly, when we do the intrinsic valuation analysis, Target is the clear winner. Uh, by the way, they also have better information as far as insider sales. Not really a strong signal either way, but you know, compared to Walmart, Target is coming out ahead there. So this is one of the only clear cases in videos that I've done where we, we have a clear winner. If you want to invest in retail, uh, for me, it's definitely going to be Target. Now, am I going to buy Target? I, I think so. I would like to have some kind of defensive stocks in my portfolio, stocks that aren't going to be earning a huge return but really aren't going to have a lot of downside risk either. And when I can get one at a discount, I will definitely do that. And so, yeah, I think Target is a buy right now. Anyhow, that's just what I'm going to do. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you for watching.